Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to the Voice Report. Well, we recently reviewed the performance of international and regional financial markets at the half-year period, and today we're taking a look at how this performance would have been filtered in to the performance of different investor portfolio types. And of course, we, we are broadly speaking about the conservative, moderate, and aggressive investor types. Let's give you a reminder as to what these, these different investor types are like. And in terms of the conservative investor or the conservative portfolio, these types of investors are focused on income generation and capital preservation. Their risk tolerance tends to be pretty low. And in terms of the time horizon, it could vary, either being short or long term. And their liquidity needs can be variable as well from moderate to high. The moderate, in, the moderate portfolio investor is focused on a balance of income generation and capital appreciation with a moderate level of risk tolerance as well as variable time horizons and liquidity needs. And finally, the aggressive investor all the way across here is very focused on capital appreciation or growth or significant and quick growth in their portfolio value. And therefore, their risk tolerance tends to be a lot higher than that of the conservative and moderate investor. What would these portfolios look like in terms of composition and allocation to different asset classes? Well, in terms of the conservative investor, just around 55% in our, in our example would be allocated to fixed income in instruments, including local and international fixed income investments. About 30% allocated to cash and money market instruments, such as money market funds, repurchase agreements, etc., And just around 15% to equities. For the moderate investor, just around 45% in orange here would be allocated to equities, be it regional or international around 50% to fixed income, and a much smaller component to uh, money market instruments, just around 5% to, to cash, in fact. And the aggressive investor, it's too much different to what we would see in the, in the conservative and moderate allocations, with just around 70% allocated to equities, international and regional, and about 30% allocated to fixed income instruments. Not really much to talk about for the aggressive investor in terms of money market instruments, or in fact, cash. So we've seen what the portfolios look like. We've seen what the investor investment objectives look like. How have these portfolios fared year to date in 2018? Well, as we can see, the conservative investors portfolio in purple would have retained negative 1.6%. The moderate portfolio in gray, just around 2.5%. And the aggressive investor, just around negative 2.2% in 2018 thus far. And this, of course, reflects the very lackluster performance of international and regional bond and stock markets overall, which we would have discussed previously. How does that stack up? Well, in, his, in the recent history, 2016 and 2017 were much better years in terms of investment performance for the, each of the portfolios, um, with 2016 averaging just around 5.5% in terms of returns for all of the investors and in 2017, a range from the conservative of 6.9 to the aggressive of 12.7% for uh, the investors in that particular year. So with these lackluster returns in 2018, everyone must be asking, well, does it still make sense to invest? And the answer is yes. Firstly, with respect to, invest with respect to investing, hindsight is usually a futile and often a frustrating exercise uh, in uh, investment discipline, which requires much more forward-looking approach to things. And secondly, investing is a marathon and not a sprint. As we can see in this illustration, if you had just left your money at the bank at the start of 2015, that $100,000 in this example, that, that 100000 would just be worth just under $101,000 today. In contrast, the conservative investor portfolio in green would be worth just around $110,000. The moderate investor would be worth portfolio would be worth just over 111,000, and the aggressive investor just over 112,000. So yes, it does pay to stay invested through the bad cycles and to continue investing over time as it builds wealth and, of course, preserves the value of your purchasing power over time. Some considerations when looking at your portfolio in these particular times. One, access to US dollars. It remains quite a constraining factor to most investors. So for those of us who are fortunate enough to have a holding of US dollars, ensure that it's working for you. It could be in as low risk an investment as a money market fund, a repurchase agreement, or a bond. 
OSI risk as equity, but ensure that it's not just losing real purchasing power at the, in a bank account. Security selection might be another useful approach in times like these, and that is ensuring that as opposed to holding a very diverse portfolio of securities in each asset class, maybe pick a few uh, with the help of your investment advisor, which may be more, much more rewarding and much more stable in times where the, the market is, has a general trend downwards. And finally, don't forget to rebalance your portfolios every now and then. With changes to financial performance, to market performance, there tends to be um, the need to rebalance your portfolio to ensure that your portfolio reflects the risk that you wanted to have and the investment objectives that you want to achieve. That's it for this week's edition. For more information, give us a call at 226-8773 or 2BOSS. Visit our website at bossinvestment.com or email us at invest at bossfinancial.com. And finally, this week, there's a much awaited, there's supposed to be the much awaited launch of the, of the NIF bonds. Um, so hopefully that will be out by Wednesday. Let's see how it goes and let's, and boss will keep you updated as we review the prospectus and put out some more information based on that. Have yourselves a wonderful investing week. This has been the Bosch Report.